It's a big day. Are you sure you're ready? I am, I am very ready. You're born ready. Before we get started, though, I think we have a special guest that wants to do our intro. Should we let him do the intro? I think we should let him do the intro. Let's let him do the intro. Hi, my name is Jet. Look, welcome back to MyGolfDNA.com. It's time to let the big dog eat. Let the big dog eat. Today, I can tell you right now, we're not letting the big dog eat because we're talking about the man himself. Who are we talking about? Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler, folks. <laughs> Holy smokes. His sixth victory of the year, folks, has already happened, and it's only June. My big question back to you is, how soon do you think people are going to be starting to develop their personalized ice skating rinks in their house to start working on trying to perfect their footwork like Scotty Scheffler? Oh, they're already doing it. They're already doing they're it. They're already doing it. Golf instruction is so funny. They're already trying to mirror this golf swing, when this golf swing is very much tied to his DNA. And to be honest with you, the right foot sliding on the ground has been around for eons. There's lots of players. Greg Norman was a player that used to slide his right foot. There's a reason why it happens, though. And I know Scotty talks about the reason why he does it. But there's a reason why you would see this actually happening if you use the ground. Should we show him a little example? We'll show him a little clip. Well, let's, yeah. let's show you a little clip. I know I didn't give you a lot of information there, but rest assured that there's going to be a video coming out on this topic and the Sooner side. Uh, but I wanted to give you a little snippet here so you could get the wheels turning. Now, today we're not talking about his footwork, but we are talking about one of the things that he is so freaking good at. What is he the best at? He has those nice, smooth wrists. Smooth wrists, I smooth. like that. He is a master of controlling his golf ball. And when you are good at controlling your golf ball, both from a front to back and a side to side standpoint, then golf becomes a whole lot more enjoyable. This week, we're gonna be focusing in on exactly what Scotty does so well in his golf swing that so many other players do. And he's got a very buttoned up rate of closure down through the bottom of the swing arc, and he's got the stuff. Later on in the week, Jason and I are gonna take you out to the range. We're gonna show you a really cool drill that we've been playing around with that helps you feel what it's like to be able to move into and through a tour quality impact position without having to force shaffling. That's a pretty good idea, huh? We don't like forcing shaffling. We don't like to force shaffling. We don't want to start, you know, slowing the club down and trying to force you to get the club to a certain spot. Golf clubs are designed to do a lot of this work for you. You have to get out of the way, but you also have to make sure that the stuff that you're doing early on in the swing shape is buttoned up. Isn't that right? And I mean buttoned up. And I mean buttoned up. Now, without further ado, let's head inside the lab. Let's take a look at this movement now. Before we get started, do me a big favor, head down below, take 30 seconds of your day and hit that subscribe button for us and turn on your bell notifications. And if you have any questions or comments, keep it nice, post that up below. What else should we tell them to do? Oh, hit the thumbs up button for us as well. That's good for Jason and I, that we like that. It's good for our psyche. Yeah. We love the support. So we live in a world with a game of golf that we have to be able to control our golf ball a lot. You have to be on top of your distance control, and you also have to be able to manage your side-to-side -side dispersion. And sometimes people lose sight of how important it is to be able to hit the golf ball to a particular number. I know that we have our stock shot distances, and a lot of you just get kind of fixated on trying to hit clubs to that certain number. But what I want you to remember is, is that the best players in the world will not just go out there and have one shot with one club. They'll have a magnitude of shots. And you can change your release pattern if you understand how to manage the club face properly from beginning to end. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about here today. Now, shaffling is one of these things that can really be, what's a good word for it, Jace? Shaffling is one of those things that can just be bastardized when it comes to the world of golf instruction. Shaffling is not something that should be forced. It should happen as a result of two very important moves in the golf swing. Number one, your center of mass moving a substantial amount in front of where it was at address. And the second thing is, is making sure that you have the club face prepped on the way down where you have your lead wrist in a position where it's slightly flexed or at least anatomically flat. If you can do those two things, then you can play the game of golf really well. Now, having lag inside of that is something that a lot of you try to strive for, but the way that you get lag is trying to overdo things with your wrists at certain times in the golf swing. And that's exactly what Scotty does not do. And the same thing when you look at Tom Kim, is both players use a very high hand and arm position and very little wrist function at the top of the swing shape. By doing little with the wrists, and allowing the glove to get into a good spot at the top of the swing, then the golf club and the wrist will start to form this natural sort of function on the way down that moves your wrist into a little bit more flexion. You're gonna see two different style of releases here today, but I wanna highlight the face on video here first so you can see exactly what I'm talking about with center of mass. If we mark a line from the belly button down to the belt buckle here at address, 
okay, and we look at the, the hands and the club head here, they're very neutral, right? And so what you're going to notice is as he starts the golf swing, the center of mass moves in behind the ball just ever so slightly. And now you can see a substantial amount of movement in front of it. And you can see at the point of contact that his wrist bones in his lead hand, right here, are closer to the target than his knuckles. He's not trying to force this angle to happen. But now he's increased his shaft lean a substantial amount. This is allowing the club face to be very stable at the point of contact. It's not a position that's forced. Now, what you will see from time to time for the best players in the world is they'll change how the wrists and the forearms function from one side of the body to the other by inducing more body turn or less body turn. And that's what you're gonna see when I show you these two different styles of releases. Looking at the left-hand side of the screen, we know that Scotty's got some sort of short iron here, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to focus in on what his wrists do early on in the swing shape. You're gonna see here that his wrists just basically rotate a small amount and they set the golf club, just a small amount. From here, you're gonna see that he continues to turn his body and elevate his hands and his arms. And at the top of the golf swing, his wrist is pretty much what we would consider almost anatomically flat here. It may have just a little bit of extension in it, but this is where things start to get really good. On the way down, that right elbow is gonna to start to work back in front of the body. And if you look at it really closely, with that right elbow moving back in front of the body, and you look at the right wrist, and then you look at the left wrist, you can start to see something happening there. That left wrist is moving from that little bit of extension now into flexion, right? That's that bowing of the wrist that seems to be so in vogue when it comes to golf instruction. It's not like he's trying to force this to happen. Because the golf club is moving into the depth dimension of the swing and because he's changing the direction with his lower half, and because he had the wrist in a good spot for this to happen, then the wrist actually starts to naturally do this. And this is where you'll see most tour pros when they are in a full swing shot, is you're gonna see them with their lead wrist anatomically flat or slightly bowed with the club shaft parallel to the ground and the club head more or less in line with the hands or slightly in behind it. Now, when we looked at Tom Kim, he had it just a little bit out in front of his hands, but he is a player that likes to hit a lot of cuts, a lot of low cuts. Now from this position, this is what we need to focus on. How we're gonna get the club to one side of the body to the other. What are we gonna do if we wanna flight the golf ball? We wanna take a little bit of distance out of it. What you'll notice here is that this swing has the hands and arms moving off to the left a substantial amount. And you'll notice that the club doesn't rotate a whole lot at all. Almost like you could hold a glass of wine on it here when the, um, the hands are right at belt height on the lead side of the body. Now with a longer iron, what you're gonna see is a pretty stark contrast. But you will notice that on the way down, that lead wrist does the exact same thing. So you can see right there, that lead wrist has got that little bit of flexion in it. And then as we get down into delivery, here we are, club shaft parallel to the ground, that lead wrist has got just a little bit of bowing in it. That means we have the golf club de-lofted. And having it de-lofted and having the center of mass moving forward means we're gonna have the ability to be able to see forward shaft lean. Now, if you look at it post-impact here, you can see that the toe of the club has rotated more up towards the sky. You can actually see his hands and his arms still out in front of his body, where you can't see any part of his arms over here. This would be more or less an efficient style release. This is where he's producing a lot more speed, where this release over here is one that he's probably trying to pull some out of it. Either way, you are capable of being able to start to develop more shots if you have the golf club prepped when it comes down in front of your body. And that's exactly what we're gonna be working towards later on in the week. We're gonna teach you how to feel that same sort of movement and transition. We're gonna teach you how to look for it when it comes down in front of your body. And then we're gonna teach you how you should move your body through the hitting area to be able to start hitting sorts of shots that you would see of the best players in the world. We'll see you guys on the range later on in the week.